I had diabetes. Well, I tried staying off the sweets and the cocoa and, you know, drinking the diet drinks on and off. And uh, I was a briefing attorney for a federal district judge, John H. Wood. The U.S. courthouse in San Antonio is named after him. And uh, then after serving as his briefing attorney for two years, I was appointed by Bill Sessions as assistant U.S. attorney for the Western District of Texas and uh, served in that capacity for a little bit over four years. And during that time, I was the president of the Federal Bar Association and very active in uh, legal matters and things like that. Had I seen the chemical formed on this product, I would never have touched it. You know, the, the poisonous effect of methyl alcohol and, and its methyl esters are, are well known. And uh, within a day or two of my starting to drink it, not only did I feel the deterioration in my body, where I couldn't swim anymore and I didn't have the balance that I had and I was short of breath from a heart failure type of problem, but my wife saw all this much more objectively than I did. And she was a nurse and she said, Jim, get off of this. This is killing you. It's destroying you. Well, I was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease back in 93 called lupus SLE systemic, which I had been dealing with. It was very severe to the point where I lost my job and eventually my insurance because over 40 doctors who saw me over a year's period kept doing one test after another and every test came back negative. I've had some of them since 1983. I can go back to as far as 1983 and possibly even before that, but I only remember doctor's offices and, and you know, the um, hospitalizations and things like that since 1983. Around, I'd say January of 2002, I started getting dizzy. I would go to the dryer to go take clothes out and fall down and not know why. The reason I found out I had a brain tumor was I lost my voice during pollen season of the year 2000, or of 98, excuse me. And um, in 98, my voice never came back from the pollen hoarseness that happened to me every year. So I went to a specialist to the local hospital here in Atlanta, and I said, all my friends' voices have come back, mine's gotten worse. And he went down my throat, and he said, well, your left vocal cord is completely atrophied. And it's been my experience when I see a condition like this that there's a brain tumor someplace that causes that. Also, the vision um, having spots, and I and I couldn't see. And I, I I literally I stopped driving because I did not feel comfortable behind a wheel. My endocrinologist told me that I have, the most likely have, multiple sclerosis. So he sent me to a neurologist. The neurologist told me that, yes, I do have a multiple sclerosis. I had been having double vision, and my doctor scheduled me to have an MRI. And uh, we were waiting on the results, and I'll never forget it. It was, oh, maybe a week or two before Christmas. And uh, the doctor called, and I, I was just you know, ready to hear, well, you know, we couldn't find anything. Well, instead, he said, you have a brain tumor, and it's a rather large brain tumor. And within a couple of days, I had gone from being a two-mile-a-day swimmer to having such a toxic cardiomyopathy that I could hardly climb the stairs to my apartment. Over the next six weeks, I went through all of the personal hells of methyl alcohol poisoning and the neurotransmitter depletion uh, from the aspartame's phenylalanine content, and eventually ended up with a picture of Lou Gehrig disease. I still had a lot of pain. But she said, well, you'll live with pain. It's part of, even though it's in remission, you're going to have pain. So I went to Tampa, finally found a rheumatologist that she had referred me to. And oddly enough, he did the same blood test and said, you never had lupus. You have advanced fibromyalgia. And I said, I just give up. So he said, well, I just don't think you ever had lupus. But for whatever reason, you're able to do what you're doing because of what she gave you. So let's just go ahead and treat you as if it's in remission, but I'm gonna treat you for, the, for fibromyalgia. But detail is very, very important. You have to get spellings name, birth dates name, everything. And with me being diagnosed with neural hearing loss, which has gotten 
significantly worse with it. I've been um, checked the last three years every six months and it's gotten, gotten a lot worse and now I'm taking, I have the two hearing aids that I have to have. I took the ice pops out thinking they were just the regular ones that I had been eating earlier and my mother-in-law had taken my little one over to her house so my husband and I were in movies and we were going to have a date night you know just night out you know night to ourselves and I pulled out the pops and went on to eat the four three four of the pops the aspartame pops well this was on a Saturday night by four o'clock Sunday morning I was digging holes in my hands from the itching I was bleeding I look like something out of a Vietnam camp from the bleeding. The doctor explained that one of the very probable side results would be a loss of short-term memory. Well, uh, I later learned that it had done a little bit more than that with me uh, in that it ruined my legal career. About then I tumbled, but only subconsciously. I said, well, you know, I, I'm just going to get off this artificial sweetener and I, I didn't really even uh, consciously suspect NutraSweet, but when I got off it, then I started recovering. My doctors will not come out and absolutely put down in writing that this is caused by aspartame. They will not do it. But they'll give me an aside like this, thank God you're off NutraSweet. That's what they'll say, but they won't put it in my records. We were doing a shelter and I was there and I had the, the um, water and that's all I did was drink water. And it was like each bottle I drank, the worse I got. And I had nothing else um, to eat or anything. There was nothing, you know, nothing else that I was ingesting at all. So that was actually a blessing because I was able to narrow it down. There must be, this must be it. Um, and I went around and I had the bottle and I was asking everybody, what's in this bottle? What is aspartame? And, you know, everybody said they had no idea. Um, and then that one lady had uh, said, she goes, well, and she goes, I've heard of it, she said. And then something kept flashing my mind and I remembered seeing the name somewhere. And I, I, like I said, I read all the time in magazines and all that. And I don't know if it was in Time or Newsweek or something, but I remember seeing an article and for some reason I keep saying that name. So uh, after I had uh, finished the shelter, I went and I was driving down the road in my library, I volunteered at the library also. And so I stopped in there to say hello and all that and see how everything was going. And they actually had power there. And I went in, I pulled it up on a computer. At that time, I didn't have a computer. And I'd never searched anything in my life, I had no clue. I had email and that's about it. Um, and I pulled up aspartame and I just, my eyes lit up, I started crying. I was. All those symptoms, the 92 symptoms, I think, I think I counted 79 of those symptoms. I've been in the hospital or, or to the doctors in complaints over 50 times for each one of them, well over. Turns out his wife was told she had lupus. She doesn't. They were getting ready to tell her she had multiple sclerosis, and she didn't. Her husband went home and jumped all over her and made her stop drinking the diet drinks, and all of a sudden things got a lot better for her. Yep. That's basically how it happened with me, Corey. I put the diet drink down, and I didn't touch it again. This was on a Friday. I think it was around the 19th of September. Last year? Yeah. And my husband looked at me, and he says, the next day, within 24 hours, she says, Baby, you're not slurring like you were. You're not falling down like you were either. And over time, it got better and got better and got better. Because I was such a high user of aspartame through primarily Diet Cokes and Equal, and uh, those, those are the primary ways, combined with the mountain of evidence and, and other testimonials of people who have have had uh, terrible symptoms of every type of malady that you can imagine. And when they're removed from the aspartame, the symptoms go away. That's what you call strong, if not direct evidence, very strong circumstantial evidence. Judge Wood, the judge I used to work for, the federal judge, <clears throat> uh, in his charge to the jury, when he would give a definition of circumstantial evidence, he would say, if, as you go to bed at night, there's no snow on the ground, and you wake up in the morning, and there's snow on the ground, you may reasonably assume 
that during the course of the night it snowed. That is an example of circum strong circumstantial evidence. You didn't see it snow. You can't <laughs> scientifically prove that the snow fell from the sky, but it wasn't there at night and in the morning it was. Therefore, you may conclude circumstantially that it snowed during the course of the night. And I would say that the evidence of, of, of my brain tumors being caused by aspartame are, are that strong to me. And then they rechallenge themselves knowingly or inadvertently. They served something in a neighbor's house that they didn't realize contained an aspartame product. And these set of symptoms and problems promptly recur within hours or a day or two, sometimes within minutes, and it does so repeatedly, then that is more than anecdotal. Uh, that is similar like the cock postulates for infection. Uh, you isolate the cause, and then you inject the animal, and you reproduce the problem. And many of these individuals who had been aspartame reactors have tested themselves five, 10, 20 times, every time getting the same response. And then they realized that this was a legitimate cause and effect relationship. My, my personal experience, from my own experience and with patients, is that when somebody who's been poisoned by this goes off it, they very quickly notice an improvement and they almost equally quickly find out that it isn't over yet. You know, they've got a lot of problems to deal with. And certainly uh, because I had to suffer with this and had patient groups that had to suffer with it, and then I would consult with doctors around the nation who were pretty much expert in, in the field of environmental ecology, I developed some therapeutic outlooks that people can have to, uh, to help themselves. But the, the first thing you've got to learn is to listen to your body. If, if something's going wrong, Try and backtrack to what you had or what you're breathing in your environment or what's going on around you. But the fact is this thing has been carefully studied, repeatedly studied, extensively studied, so that, as I said before, the FDA concluded it's one of the most thoroughly tested food additives they've ever seen. And the conclusion is that it's safe. They had made the claim years ago that they would help and support any legitimate researcher, that they would supply aspartame and be helpful in any research. I had published my anecdotal uh, studies and I had uh,